All right, replacing front brake pads. So a relatively simple operation this time around, but then again, it's only really simple if you know how. So yeah, replacing front brake pads. So chances are over the course of car ownership, you're going to encounter this job at the very least once, you know, and probably a lot more than that. Um, but let me start off by saying that there is a massive variety of brake pad and caliper combinations out there, and each one differs slightly from the next. So for this video, I'm solely going to be concentrating on the Girling M16 caliper, as was fitted to many 70s and 80s Fords, the Capri included. joys of owning a lowered car. Now one thing this brake setup did not feature was any kind of wear indicators so it's up to you to frequently check the condition of the brake pads or wait for them to wear out completely which I don't recommend but you'll definitely know when that happens. Um, so first off let's take a look at how to visually check the condition of the brake pads. So with the front wheel off and the caliper exposed you can clearly see the two brake pads here either side of the disc. Uh, now what you're looking at is how much friction material is left on the pad so I only put these in a couple of months ago so I already know there's plenty of meat left on them but if yours are getting down below say three millimeters I'd definitely start thinking about swapping them out. Um, the other thing you need to be looking for is any kind of uneven wear so say for example one pad's worn out completely and the other's fine, well then chances are you've got some sort of caliper issue which you need to deal with sooner rather than later. Um, but for now, let's just assume you're dealing with two worn out brake pads and you need to get them out. So firstly remove these two clips. And then with a pair of pliers remove the two pins. Well I didn't even need pliers for that to be honest. Put the clips back in the pins then you don't lose them, speaking from experience. Right, with the same pair of pliers you should be able to pull the pads out from the caliper. But with a bit of persuasion, they should come out, that's one. And that's the other, whoops. So once you've removed the old pads, you're about ready to fit a new set. But what you'll find is if you removed an old worn out set of pads, is that these two pistons in the caliper will be a lot closer together to compensate for that wear. Um, in fact, instead of me trying to explain this to you, let me show you exactly what I mean. So I'm going to use these two pieces of metal to simulate worn out pads. So now I'm going to pump the brake pedal. Okay, now this is much more like the situation you're going to be confronted with if you just removed a set of old worn out pads and then when you go to fit your new set, uh oh that ain't going to fit so you need to push these pistons back into the caliper. So there's a few different ways of doing this, the simplest being to lever them back with a large screwdriver or, or a crowbar or something like that, um, but sometimes they can be a bit stubborn which is why I invested in one of these. This is a caliper retraction tool, I think it cost about £15 and it's been worth every penny. Okay now using these things is pretty simple, just insert the ears, I'm going to call them the ears, just insert them into the caliper and wind them out till you're just putting pressure on the pistons. Okay that's about it, now stop 
because before we go any further we need to go into the engine bay. Okay, locate the brake fluid reservoir and remove the cap. Now you'll need to keep a close eye on the fluid level in here because as you force the pistons back it's going to rise and let me explain one thing about brake fluid to you which is it will mess up a good paint job. So don't let it overflow and if it starts to get close to the top well I've got a highly sophisticated bit of kit I use to remove fluid which is a turkey baster. Hmm. So keep winding the pistons back and keep a close eye on the fluid level in the reservoir. Now there's a school of thought here that says pushing brake fluid back up into the reservoir this way is bad for the seals in the master cylinder and the correct way you should be doing it is to crack the bleed nipple <laughs> nipple is to crack the bleed nipple and push the fluid out that way um, now I'm not going to argue with that but I've always done it this way and I'd go as far to say there's less risk doing it this way than potentially breaking off a seized bleed nipple in the caliper when you're trying to undo it so look at the end of the day it's one of those you choose which way you want to do it type deals so once the pistons are fully pushed back just ease up on this a little and then remove it and now you've got plenty of room to install your new pads so installation is basically the reverse of removal uh, the only thing I like to do is put a small smear of copper grease on the part of the pads where they meet the caliper um, not on the friction material itself I might add that would be a bad idea that's one Now there's also these shims too, um, these are basically to reduce brake noise, um, install them if you've got them, I've only got half a set. And once you get everything lined up, put the pins back in. Don't forget the clips. And once those pins are secure you can put the wheel back on. Now this would be a good point to mention that it's standard practice to replace all brake parts as pairs so to do this job properly you should be going around the other side and doing the same round there but I'm not going to show you that because it's exactly the same. So once you've done both sides, now will be a good time to check the level of the brake fluid and top up or take away if necessary. Uh, don't forget to put the cap back on and you're almost done. Apart from one last massively important step right, pump the brake pedal until it's firm. Okay, I can't stress that enough. If you wait till you're out on the street to do this, you're going to end up firmly lodged in someone's boot, okay, trust me. It's also worth mentioning that there's always a bedding in period for new brake parts, so you may experience slight irregularities in your braking for the first hundred miles or so and as long as it's nothing too severe chances are you've got nothing to worry about and if you're at all worried take it somewhere quiet just to test it out I'll catch you next time Yeah. Mm -hmm.